Vertical fans, check this out. So this is my uh, arcade cabinet. I have lots of videos on this, link in the description of those. But somebody told me to try out the Arcadia 6. It's a coin-op style front end, and uh, it was really legit. So I went ahead and took out my Raspberry Pi and put in a PC, a small PC, like a $20 emulation PC, like old Dell, and this is what I came out with. So in this video, I'll show you my setup, show you how I set it up, go through all the collections of this pre-made build and uh, how I did it, the whole nine yards. So let's go ahead and uh, check it out. So I did have to get my monitor to go like this and then I used the 90 degree, I think it's the 90 degree one, let me see. You just gotta run those batch files, yeah, see? That's how it runs well for me. Now, um, I could easily just go properties, or not personalized, but property, display settings, and then I could just go back to portrait, keep my changes, and now I could use the internet, um, you know, if I wanted to, like YouTube. I should watch my own ads, huh? Let's see what happens when you full screen, yeah. So, I could still watch watch a video if I wanted to. Okay, and then you still have Windows. And then if I wanna, you know, if I'm just gonna keep this in my cabinet, I'll just keep it on. And I just tilt my head, it's not a big deal. Um, I mean, I can just go ahead and drop it like a shortcut, create a shortcut, drop it on my hard drive, and then all I gotta do is boot it up. I can even run some sort of auto run script to boot right up so I don't even need a keyboard and a mouse. So for this video, I had a keyboard hooked up to set up my initial controls at a wireless mouse, but um, now that my controls are all mapped, I mapped these controls here, no problem. You just gotta go to the, the main settings within the game and change those. Um, and that could be done with your keyboard or with a controller, uh, but let me just like load a game for example. Okay, so for the Xbox 360, for the Xbox 360 controller, it was just trigger and push your left analog down. And then I can just go to general controls over here, player one controls, and this is where you're gonna change all your controls. These are your master controls. So this will be in all of your main games here. Now, you can go over here to this game's controls, and then this will overwrite your general controls just for this particular game that you're in currently. So I don't know what game we're in, whatever game we're in right now. So it would have overwritten those controls for Lunar Rescue, okay? Um, do know, I didn't play with that that much, but if you go to settings over here, you can actually turn your scan lines on and off. I don't know if you see that, but there's easy, depending on what game you're playing, you can go ahead and turn on these scripts. Last effect. Oh, and they even give you a preview here of what that'll look like, which is cool. Right? Right, very cool. So super user friendly. So back to my setup here. I showed you how to set up my controls. I got these controls working, no problem. I mean, this is a vertical arcade cabinet. You really only need one button for the majority of the games, although I do have auxiliary buttons underneath. You can see those. There. The thing I want to point out is mine has uh, USB extensions, so I could run my Xbox or keyboards directly out of the back. Now I'm about to show you then, so this does run off the Xbox 360 controller, and it's pre-set up for that. All your games are gonna run just straight out the bat with the Xbox 360, if you wanna just do that. Um, you don't need this whole cabinet. You could just go get a monitor, Xbox 360 controller, and an old computer, and it's gonna run this just fine. Okay, so here's my cabinet. Now, here, um, I am able to still utilize that speaker. I'll show you in just a second. Now, everything's a mess back here because all, all I'm doing is I wanted to test this out for a video, okay? All right, so all the controls, USB encoder, all the power supplies for everything. You can put the computer right in here in the back. Um, here's my old Pi that it was running on, and I just switched it to PC, and then the amp is, um, tied to the ground over there, but I can control the volume still. Really loud. Or quieter. And then I can also control it from the computer as well, but I just have the 3.5 going from the speaker to the amp to the computer over here. So here's the computer. It's just a little Dell 
Optiplex i5 processor, not too big of a deal. And then I'm just running, you know, the USB extender, the HDMI cable, the 3.5 audio, and then I have it on an external hard drive, the build, uh, but I can absolutely just put it on the internal hard drive on this device, no problem. And that's it, that's all you require. I have it in the online just because I had to download some drivers, but you don't need to connect to the internet, and otherwise this one does have a Wi-Fi card I can always hook up to it. So yeah, this is the, um, the build, and you can put it in a cabinet and it looks great. All right, so let's just do a quick, so you have on the right side there, you have a bunch of, um, you have all your games, uh, favorites, Pac-Man style games, shoot 'em ups karate style, flying games, driving games. So they're already kind of mixed up for you. Um, let's just do all games and show you some of the games on here. There's a lot. And look at that, each game has its own marquee and video snap. And I'll show you the, you know, what this is running on. But um, I like this a lot. I typically run a Raspberry Pi in my cabinet here. And I have to say that this is way better. It's just, it's more powerful. You're gonna be able to run more stuff, but then again, you really don't need to run a lot of stuff in a vertical. But um, you could you could just get like a mini PC too. And then the cool thing about a PC is you can um, you know still go online, watch YouTube, things like that. Raiden, a great game. This is some boxing games, a lot of shooters, and quite a lot of depth here. Oh, you got a, the new Pac-Man, Pac-Mania. So Pac-Man, probably a fun little game. You'll see how fast things load on here. Enter in some tokens once this loads up. Oh, I couldn't get out of that.
great games. This game's actually really cool. Try, try that game out. That game's really cool. There's a lot of really cool games, obviously, but some of the ones you may not have heard of. Like Galaga, great. <laughs> I mean, this is what it's made for. This, cal this cabinet is a Galaga cabinet. How can we go past Galaga? Yes, I know there's an activate windows on this computer. I just need to get a CD key. Intercept. So you get it. Frogger should be fun on this. Be careful with those games, you might get a, a, a seizure. For those of you who know, I love trying to get up to Princess on the first try here. Let's try. Let's see what you got, donkey. Oh, I thought I could outpace it. Oh, well, okay. Well, by the way, that's how you change your controls, which I'll get into later, but you just hit start and select. Oh. All right, well, now let's start working the opposite way. Remember, we ended at Donkey Kong, so now we're just gonna go A to D. But look how fast this loads, the video snaps. This is one of the nice things about having a computer. Yes, you have Contra. In conclusion, I yes, love the front Galaga end. Ripoffs. And honestly, it has a lot more potential than the Raspberry Pi does. And you can always get those really small form factor computers and things like that. So just another option for All you. Right. And I really so like the ROM pack the and the front end as a whole, especially the way how easy it is to change those scan lines. It's not something the Raspberry Pi can do so easily. So with all that, I'm really digging it. That's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch you on the next one.